In this video, we're going to focus on what you need to know in order to get started using Closed Caption Creator 8. Closed Caption Creator allows users to create subtitles for video, transcribe audio files, create closed captioning files for broadcast television, and we now support the ability to create audio description tracks for video. All of this is possible using one application. In this video, we're going to look at our subtitle workflow and provide an overview of how Closed Caption Creator makes it easy for you to add subtitles to your video content. Before we start, it's important to understand that Closed Caption Creator offers both a desktop and a web client. The web client is compatible with the Chrome browser. The desktop client is compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux. For this video, it shouldn't make any difference whether you use the web client or desktop client to follow along. Let's get started. When you first launch Closed Caption Creator, it will ask you to log in using the same email you used when signing up from our homepage. If this is your first time logging into Closed Caption Creator, it will ask you to create a new password for your account. Once you've successfully logged in, you'll be greeted by the welcome page. This page provides quick access to common tasks you would want instead of having to go through the menu system. You can create a new project, load a recent project, or even manage your account all from this window. For this example, we're going to create a new project. The new project window will appear displaying a form asking you for some information. The first option will let you decide whether you wish to create a default or a team project. Team projects allow you to work collaboratively with other users and sync your changes between team members. This is a great option for delivering projects fast. We'll discuss team projects in more detail in another video. For now, we'll select the default project type. Next, give your project a name or title. This is how the project will be saved and referenced later on. Try and make project names unique so that you don't accidentally overwrite anything. Next, select the frame rate of your source media. This will be important when creating closed caption files for broadcast. Closed Caption Creator supports most frame rates and provides drop frame options where applicable. Next, we'll select our media source, the location type of where our content is stored. Closed Caption Creator supports YouTube, Vimeo, cloud storage, and local storage. In order to take full advantage of the features of Closed Caption Creator, we recommend having your media stored locally. For example, I'm going to select local storage and choose a short MP4 file I have stored in my videos folder. There are additional options that can be specified here. However, they can also be changed after creating your project, so I'll leave them as their defaults. Click Create Project once you're ready. Congratulations, you just created your first project. I want to take a moment here to provide a brief overview of the main UI. The Closed Caption Creator user interface is made up of five main components. The top component is the toolbar, which contains options for things like saving your project, updating different settings, changing the position or timing of your events, and even running automatic functions such as speech-to-text or translation. Below the toolbar, you'll find the media player and the media player controls. The controls allow you to start video playback, change the speed of playback, and even advance frame by frame. For a complete guide on the functions of each control, we recommend reading through our user guide available under the help menu or through the welcome page. Below the media player, we have the quick tools drawer. Here you have access to different tools, including the styles panel for customizing the look of your subtitle events, the search panel that allows you to find a word and event and replace it, the timing and sync panel for syncing your events with your media, and finally the QC panel for reviewing your work. We won't cover all of these in this video, but we do have other videos that go over each of them in detail. To the right of the media player and quick tools drawer, we have our event editor and event editor controls. At the top of the event editor, we have our event group tabs that allow you to switch between different event groups. As you switch between event groups, you'll notice the event list updates to show you the events in that group. Your project may have one event group or multiple event groups depending on the number of languages you have or the deliverables for that project. For example, you may need to create closed captioning and audio description for a single video. This can be done all in one project using two event groups, one for subtitles and one for audio description. We'll talk more about the event editor as we move on. To the left of the event editor are the event editor controls. These allow you to add and remove events, copy and paste events, and even change the position of events. Again, we may not cover all of these in this video, but we do have other videos that go over each of them in detail. You can also find descriptions for each control in our user guide available from the help menu. Finally, I want to draw your attention to the interactive timeline at the bottom of the screen. When I click the play button on the media player, the timeline will begin to generate an audio waveform. If you're using our desktop client, we'll also scan the media file for scene changes and add red markers in the ruler at the bottom of the timeline. The timeline is a great way to navigate your project and interact with your events using the mouse. 
Once an event is assigned a start and end time, it will show up in your timeline. From here, you can edit the timing of the event using the left and right handles. You can also click and drag the event along the timeline to reposition it in time. You can scroll the timeline as well by holding down the shift key and scrolling up and down using the mouse. As well, you can click and drag the ruler to navigate back and forth. You can change the zoom levels of the timeline using the default zoom options in the menu on the right. We provide defaults for 10, 15, 30, 45, and 60 seconds, meaning you'll see up to 60 seconds of events on the timeline at once. Choose a lower increment in order to increase the zoom level. I think we're ready to start captioning our video. There are a few options when it comes to how you caption your video. In most cases, you'll start by transcribing the audio to text. Next, you'll want to sync your transcription with your media. And then finally, you'll want to go back through and format your events. For example, you may wish to position them elsewhere on the screen or bold certain lines. Let's start with transcribing our video. I can either do this automatically using the AI tools provided by Closed Caption Creator, or I can do this process manually. In order to automatically transcribe the audio from our video, we can go to the AI menu in the top toolbar and click Automatic Transcription. I want to remind you that Automatic Transcription does have an additional cost, which is charged per minute of media. When we click the Automatic Transcription option, a new window appeared where we can select the language, number of speakers, and provide a profile based on how the media was captured. When we submit this transcription job, it will extract the audio from our video and upload it to secure cloud storage in order to perform the transcription. Once the transcription is complete, the audio file is deleted from storage. We never store user information longer than is required. You can monitor the transcription process by going to the transcript import dashboard. This dashboard also allows you to view past jobs so you never lose track of a transcript. You can export the dashboard results as a report in order to view the total number of minutes you or your team have used over the specified time frame. When the transcription job completes successfully, you can import the results as a new event group into your project. You'll notice the events have start and end times already associated with them. From here, I can review the transcription and make any edits. Now we'll go back to our original event group and transcribe our video manually. Before I start transcribing the video, I wanted to review some of the different options we have in order to make manual transcription much easier. The first option is to change the playback speed by going to the playback rate control under the player. If you find it difficult to keep up with the audio, you may want to reduce the playback speed to 75 or even 50%. The second option is the pause while typing feature that will momentarily pause playback anytime you import text into an event. This makes it a little easier to keep up. The last tip I have is to use the custom keyboard shortcuts. If you go to edit, keyboard shortcuts, you'll see a window that allows you to customize a number of different shortcuts in Closed Caption Creator. We recommend setting up shortcuts for creating new events, pausing playback, reversing a few seconds in the media player. There are other shortcuts available that you can configure as you like. Remember, you don't want to assign a shortcut to a common key you use when typing, like the spacebar or enter key. We recommend always using a key modifier like Alt, Shift, or Control. Now we can begin transcribing our video. I have the pause while typing option enabled so that as I type, it'll automatically pause the video. Let me show you how. You'll notice that once I finish transcribing an event, I use the shortcut key I assigned to create a new event. This saves me from having to use the mouse. Now that I've finished transcribing my video, you'll notice that all of my events start and end at zero. You'll also notice none of them are displayed on the timeline. The next step is to sync my events with my media. To do this, I'll open the timing and sync panel in the quick tools drawer. I'll start by enabling the panel. Next, I'll select my first event, and then I'll go to the beginning of my video. You'll notice I have two text areas here, with two buttons below them. One that says Show Event, and the other says Hide Event. Above the buttons, we have the next event, where the text of the selected event is shown, and the current event box shows the event that's currently active on screen. Watch as I play back the video, and click the Show Event button in order to trigger the first event. This will begin to draw the event on the timeline. You can see that I now have the option to either hide that event using the hide event button, or I can show the next event, which will also cause the first event to end. As I go through this process, you'll notice that the start and end times of my events are updating as well. When you first start using the timing and sync panel, you may find it difficult, but I believe with practice, you'll be able to master it and time your work at even faster speeds. The last step in our subtitle workflow is the event formatting. 
This can be done as part of the transcription process, but I like to do it at the end of a project once I have the timings all set. Here I'll go through each event and make sure it looks correct and the placement is right. For this, I like to use the expand and compress controls in the event editor control bar. I can either compress each event one at a time, or I can select multiple events and compress them all at once. If I want my subtitles to appear at the top of the screen, I can also select all of my events and update the position to appear at the top instead of the bottom. Finally, I'm ready to export my project. Closed Caption Creator supports both video export with burnt in subtitles and subtitle export. To export a subtitle file, simply open the File Export menu by going to File Export. Select the subtitle option and click Next. Select the event group you wish to export along with the export profile. For this example, I want to export a broadcast SCC file, so I'll select the SCC file extension and select Scenerist from the profile dropdown. Closed Caption Creator supports over 25 different profiles, including SRT, WebVTT, and more. Click the Export button when ready, and the file will automatically save to your Downloads folder, or a prompt will ask you where you wish to save the file. If you wish to export a video with Burton subtitles, otherwise known as Open Captions, we'll again want to open the File Export menu by going to File, Export. This time, we'll select the Video option and click Next. I'd like to make a note that Video Export is only supported when using the desktop client. From here, the video export window will appear asking you to select a target folder where you want to save your video. I'll select my videos folder. Next, select the event group and the container format you wish to use. I'll choose MP4. Click export when you're ready. The video export will finish and the target folder should open automatically. By this point, you should have enough of an understanding to start your first project and begin creating subtitles. If you have any issues or you get stuck, please contact us using our support page or by emailing support at closedcaptioncreator.com. We also highly recommend reading our user guide for more information and as a reference whenever you need to look something up. Thank you for taking your time to learn more about Closed Caption Creator. You can watch more of our videos by visiting our website at closedcaptioncreator.com.